Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to talk about what's on my coffee bar. As we're nearing 2021, and I do know that some coffee gear is coming in 2022, I would just like to share with you what's currently on my coffee bar because that's gonna be changing. And also just have a discussion, so just feel free to comment below, let me know what's on your coffee bar. And I'd also like to take the time to thank three people that bought me coffees in the last uh, month or two. Somebody that named themselves on the Buy Me Coffee platform as Ozzy, YouTube 80 Kids Forever. Somebody that named themselves James Hoffman, which I was really excited about, but then when their real name came through on the payment, I saw their real name. Split second, I really thought James Hoffman backed me and I was like, whoa, the big YouTube granddaddy <laughs> gave me a coffee, but thank you, the person that named themselves James Hoffman. And a Mr. Bob, southern part of New Jersey. So thank you all for that. That's been really appreciated and uh, helping me with my coffee addiction. <laughs> if you're curious about that, there's a buy me a coffee link down below, but don't feel pressured. You can also help support by sharing the video and liking everything and commenting to help feed the algorithm. And I appreciate all of you uh, either way. I live in a one bedroom. Space is somewhat limited. It's a pretty generous size one bedroom. Kitchen space and such is quite limiting. I used to have a very minimalist coffee bar, super minimal, and I loved it. It took no space on my counter, but I was also doing pour over, and when the pandemic hit and I decided to invest in some coffee equipments, I went through the gamut of what I wanted and realized I actually like espresso. Whenever I go out to a coffee shop, I'll always get espresso just because it's a harder thing and I never made it myself. Well, we're in lockdown. What better time to keep myself occupied than to buy myself an espresso machine? And thus, my coffee journey begun, began. I will be making a whole coffee journey video at a later time, but for now, this is just the equipment. And I'll be linking all of the products down below, the exact same products I have or equivalent. And if there's a review for it on my channel, I'll also Put that all in the description. I actually would have really liked to have my own dedicated coffee bar, but I instead opted to get a desk. It could technically be a coffee bar, but for now it's just gonna be a desk. We're starting on the left side of my coffee bar, which is really just the left side of my counter where my stove top is. Tamper stand that I got on AliExpress. It works really well. I didn't do a review for this one. It just holds my tamper and uh, the portafilter. I have this brew book that I backed on Kickstarter. I think it's available for purchase now. Now you can write down all your recipes and you can just be extra, extra nerdy with that. And then I felt like a couple things were missing. So I actually added my own information of altitude and variety, just so I can really hone in and understand the different parameters that I'm really enjoying. And then I put a little heart if I really liked it and want to purchase it again. That's just my own system. And I really love this book. It's beautiful and I leave it here with uh, a couple of pens. Zoshi Roshi hot water machine, and this is actually something I would count into my coffee bar just because I do use it for tea, but I also use it for pour over. We have the WDT tool that I sometimes use. And then I have this Barista Space 10 magnet portafilter dosing funnel. Though I will link a cheaper one that has four magnets that you can get on AliExpress. Had I been able to find this on AliExpress because I wasn't putting the keywords that they're using, I wasn't able to find it, but this is the Barista Space one, if that's something that you would want to get, if you want to get the exact same one, but the AliExpress one is much cheaper. I would have just gotten that one. Sete 270, not the WI, the just the regular type Sete 270 that is time-based. I put this little information for myself for pour over. I actually don't use the hopper anymore, as you see, it's empty. I now single dose. There's my single dosing system. I will link the video for that. Usually I have one or two coffee bags here, but I kind I actually just ran out of coffee and this is the last of it, and other than some in my freezer. This is some work beans that I took um, that it's probably kind of old by now, but I wanted to see if I could use the beans that we get at work on the Super Auto, and I wanted to see if I can make good espresso with it because the Super Auto at work I've just become too snobby. I cannot drink that anymore. Tastes like tar. Then I have my knock box right here. Nothing really special to mention about the knock box. I actually don't love the format and I find it ends up spilling a little bit of coffee and I don't know if it because it's tapers towards the, the top. Uh, it makes it more solid having a bigger base, but the top tapering, I end up, you know, having a couple of grains spill out or a little bit of liquid. It could just be the nature of knock boxes. So yeah, this is on the right side. Also have a little uh, mirror that I was gonna use for espresso. This is actually a bicycle mirror, but uh, doesn't doesn't really work that well, but I end up not even really using it. So it has a zoom feature. 
Hello. Oop, it's quite dirty, but I don't use it. This is a reusable paper towel cloth I bought from a local brand. So I'm probably gonna link one that's not the local brand. It's compostable, it's washable, it's reusable. It comes in a roll of 10 like that. But uh, I don't really use like paper towels because once you break it off, it's you can't really put it back. So I have two in rotation and then they go in the wash. I always leave my blind basket there to do the cleanings right after I pull a shot. I use this to clean the tip of the steam wand is what I use this for. And then I'll give it a rinse and then put it back. And then I have this towel that I just use to dry my cups because I usually wash and dry them right away. I hand wash them just so I don't have to wait to load them in the dishwash. Scale that I leave here so it's out of the way and tucked away. This I also did a review, I'll link that. Then I have my beautiful Breville dual boiler, my baby. that took me on this whole journey. I got this pretty much a year ago in December. The cups that I have, I actually started off with this cup that I didn't purchase. This was a free cup I got from a Cirque du Soleil event that I won. I actually did a vlog on it on my channel and this came in the VIP pack, a pack of, it was a pair of two. Um, what I didn't know is that you're not supposed to put any metal, you're not supposed to have metal in there because of the frequency or whatever. It ended up shattering the interior wall and then that made it useless. Um, that was really sad for that time I was drinking coffee. I was just trying to mix it with the spoon. So don't do that. That will apparently shatter it. So then I was left with one. And then I was like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I ended up finding this Bodum Pavina eight ounce glass, which is almost identical. And I really, really like, it's got all these other special features on them with this like valve supposed to help with the pressure. I honestly never had a problem with that one, which is a cheaper version that doesn't have that valve. Usually like drinking coffee out of mugs, but I like this double glass feature because I can see my coffee really well in there. I can see the extraction, I can see the layers and the crema, and I actually like that. So this is kind of an exception to my drinkware. I don't know if you can consider this a parabolic curve. I guess you can. It's got a nice curve to it. So I guess technically that would help for latte art. An eight ounce, it's perfect for my double shot and like about four ounces of milk for a flat white. I think that's the right proportions for flat white, whatever. That's the drink that I make every morning. Even though this glass looks very similar to my other glass, it's a little bit heavier and just a better quality glass, which makes sense since this is actually more expensive than the promo kit that came with this one, but they're quite similar. And, and I'm happy there are three there and they kind of fit like a unit. In the back of that, I have these little DeLonghi espresso shot glasses. I don't actually drink espresso straight, but I do have these if ever. I do decide to do that eventually. Right on top of the right side of my stove, right on top of the espresso machine, we open here. I have all of my glasses here, some tea stuff. And in the second section, I have tea and all of my little mugs and more additional coffee stuff. I have two different pour over devices. I have the Espro Bloom, and then I have the Kalita Wave 185 for one to two people, they say. It's pretty much generally one though. And I opted to get this one instead in cafes. I'll find the bigger filter for the 185, but not the 155. But I opted for this one just because it's just better for when you're making smaller cups like one. The coffee isn't all spread out on a wider surface area. So it actually can saturate the coffee grains a lot better. Don't ask me what the difference between the two is. I couldn't really tell you off of the top of my head. And I haven't played with them side by side very much since getting my espresso machine. I think that this one had a bit more clarity. It did extract faster. I think they had more clarity and this one had a little bit more body, but I don't remember. They're both flat bottom uh, pour over devices. Then I have this beautiful Kalita carafe for pour over, uh, approximately 500 mils. So it's usually for one person, unless you're doing two small glasses or I do one mug and a half, but usually I'm not gonna drink that much. I, I always think I'm gonna drink that much and then I don't. So this has been really good for my purposes. I have this, I love it, it's beautiful. I think it's microwave safe, but I just don't tend to risk that anyway. Then up there, I also have this Vietnamese coffee dripper. And you want something really sweet and refreshing. I love making Vietnamese coffee, but it's a very strong coffee with ice and with condensed milk and it's yummy, it's so good. I got this to go camping with to do pour over because it has a little thermometer there. So it was kind of a two in one and it's a kettle. I do use this at home with to do pour over, it's heavier. I used to have a smaller jug that I've sold now 
because I always upgrade and then just keep the newest version so I don't have duplicates and everything. So I'll put the hot water in there and then I'll use that for pour over since it has the gooseneck spout. I thought I was gonna use this more, but when I went camping, I saw what other people were using for coffee. Usually you're a lot of people, and so it's better to have a bigger percolator or something to make coffee for everybody because everyone's gonna ask you for coffee. Trust me, that's the thing that's gonna happen. And then you're gonna be the one that has to do all these pour overs with this for like five people. Um, not gonna be that fun. <laughs> so this is that. Then I have this little brush here, the Palo brush to clean the group head. So the way I have my coffee machine, I have it, if you look, it's set to a diagonal, just so I can maximize space a little bit because of this steam wand taking up a room. I can't have it straight and I wanna be able to easily access the steam wand. It's like really tight for space here. So it actually makes me gain a little bit of counter space, a tiny bit, and then here it allows me to put my knock box there. And then in the back, I've managed to utilize that space with my Kafisa powder to do the cleaning. If we go to my fridge, this is where the remainder of my coffee equipment is. I have my frothing jug in there. It's got markings inside to make it easier to, for me to always get a consistent amount of milk. And it's a 12 ounce, 350 milliliter. So that's perfect for the amount of milk that I'm steaming. It actually might be slightly too big, but it does the job really well. So I have it in there at all times to keep it nice and cool. I always rinse it and just put it right back in there. Then I have my amber maple syrup, just, you know, Canadian stuff. Just got my maple syrup in there that I made a custom label for a lot of products in my house that are zero waste just because I'm ridiculous. This is not zero waste though. I think I can get it zero waste, but I get them in the 500 ml uh, cans, which are recyclable and I believe easily recyclable unlike a lot of other products that don't recycle properly. So I do have that and then I put it in here and then I have a nice little pump and this was reused from dish soap. So I had to clean this quite a bit to get all that soap out. So don't want soapy coffee. It's not great. My routine when I'm making coffee is to take the mugs here, which are nice and warm. I have this on a timer. Then I go here. I put a couple pumps of my maple syrup. Then I put it there, tear everything, take my jug. Then I have my milk, 3.8%, which is from a zero waste company as well. So I have all of that ready to go. Very last thing is actually in my freezer and it is here. Some coffees that I have frozen for emergency purposes, but also, so if there's coffees that I really like, I can put them in here. If I buy two at a time, which is usually the case, I'll split half the bag right away and freeze them because I know I'm not gonna consume them within a two, three week time frame. So I'll freeze them. So I have two in here, actually. Right now, I think I only have two. And this is a, a reusable vacuum sealer that I purchased. So that is a tour of my coffee bar. Everything is so easily accessible and all in one area. The water is really close to me to get to because it's just the sink that's right on the other end. The island is right there with the sink. So it makes everything very easy, very reachable, very accessible. So I guess that's the benefit of a small space. So if I have to refill water, it's very easy for me to do it. Um, I don't ever slack on any of this stuff. I've made my life very convenient and efficient and organized. I, I use pretty much all of the devices that I have, some more than others. Hopefully this helped you get an idea or just entertained you to just see how other people have their coffee bar set up. Maybe this gave you some ideas. Let me know in the comments below all of your thoughts. Did it help you get ideas? Did it let me know what you have on your coffee bar, how your setup is? I'd be curious to know. Maybe there's a better way for me to configure everything when I put up the grinder and the espresso machine, I was quite sad that I lost quite a bit of counter space compared to my minimal setup before. And the ironic thing is now with COVID and work from home, I'm actually cooking more. Whereas before I barely cooked and I had all this counter space, but I just like the visual cleanliness. I don't like clutter. And now I have a lot less space, but actually it's still quite workable. Um, you actually don't need as much space as you think. And everything is pretty easy to be able to tuck aside and put to the corner. This is actually enough space to put things down from the fridge when I'm cooking. And then on this side here, I can easily move this aside. This is where I'll put my toaster, my rice cooker, and I have way enough space to actually cook. 
So I'm quite happy with my coffee bar setup and I know I actually have quite a bit more space than a lot of other people. So I'm very lucky and fortunate for that. Please like the video if it helped you, it'll help feed the algorithm and it'll help other people find this video as well. Comment, let me know all your thoughts. Subscribe if you haven't already, you can see more content like this. I have other coffee videos on my channel as well as just general product reviews. Share this with your, your other coffee buddies and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye.